What's up guys? I'm Judd Abendroth and this is Big Man Fitness. Well, kind of continue the discussion from last week, fat acceptance. <coughs> Again, it's a, it's a conversation I think that definitely deserves a, a lot more than just one video. I'm probably going to touch on it a few more times. I'm reading so much about this. But today I kind of want to spend time on the other side of it. Now, before we get started, don't forget to reach on down here. Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, give us a big thumbs up if you like this video, don't forget to leave some comments. Let me know what you guys think. So, last week I talked about the whole acceptance thing and the normalization of bigger people. Obesity is a major problem, but look at let's look at the flip side of that coin. You know, there's certain times, certain things as we're growing up, they just get beat in our heads. And one of them are movie stars, models, the, the human standard. And I can really only speak from a man's perspective. I can't even really talk about how tough it is on, even on, on women. And the standards that are, are kind of put forth for them to try to try, try to hit, I mean these standards are insane. To be honest with you, I mean we're talking super thin, really muscular built guys or really skinny guys. So from a man's perspective, it's either you're really built or you should be really skinny. There is no in between. We tend to make fun of people, what we call the dad bods. So I'm not even talking fat people, just it's life. Your metabolism slows down. <sighs> Tabloids make so much money on photos of like people like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Possibly one of the greatest bodybuilders ever. And because of his age and metabolism, he's just not working out like he used to. He's got a little flab. It's gonna happen. But we, we as humans, I guess, expect to hold ourselves to that standard, to a standard that is extremely difficult to achieve, let alone maintain. At what point are we to, and, and trust me, I am literally six days a week. I got to eat at these times. I got to eat this stuff. I got to do all the certain things and that's just to lose weight. I watch I watch these videos and they're great movies, check them out, like Generation Iron, there's uh, certain uh, bodybuilders I follow on YouTube, uh, Jay Cutler's one of them, uh, Dwayne Johnson, whether you want to call him a bodybuilder or not, you know, The Rock. The, the schedule they keep and how much they have to put in to make their bodies look a certain way. Dwayne Johnson makes a living off having his body look a certain way. Jay Cutler makes a living having his body look a certain way. And we get it in our heads. This is how we're supposed to look all the time. That is how a man is supposed to look or for women, the supermodel, Cindy Crawford's, the Tyra Banks, I mean that's that's what's expected. We see it all the all the actors, people that have nothing but time really to really get in shape, to really just always work out and just do the different things that are needed. They got coaches, trainers, they got it all. But we hold ourselves to a standard that that's how it's supposed to be. Even even Instead of just saying we want to be healthy, it's that that's what we want to achieve. 
And we kind of make fun of people for not getting to that point. So normalization of fat acceptance kind of makes sense because on the other end, those standards aren't, aren't real. I mean, are they? I, I, I don't know many people that are built like Jay Cutler, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Callum Munger, uh, Von Munger. I mean, these guys are monsters. They're huge. And you see women hardly eating. They're trying to maintain that, that figure. There, there was a lady bodybuilder. I was following her last year. And once I remember her name, I'll, I'll maybe drop a, a link to her Instagram and her YouTube channel below. She caught so much flack. She was retiring from bodybuilding. She was a competitive bodybuilder, I think on the physique side of it. So she didn't have the big muscles. She was just really skinny, good, good tone, good muscle definition. And within like a couple months, everybody was giving her so much flack for the little bit of weight she had gained, which I would consider normal weight. That's, that's probably her normal body size. But yet people are, are really trashing her for trying to trying to live a kind of healthier lifestyle because she's not living that bodybuilder lifestyle what point do we are we, I mean how to, how to say this what when is it right on this far side where people are super skinny muscles great definition great tone or on this side. Why is there, everybody in between seems to get made fun of, so why why should these people be excluded and these people be excluded? Again, the normalization of, of you know, fat acceptance, or you, you must accept me for my size. Well, yes and no. My height, I can't do nothing about. My girth, I'm trying to do something about. I don't expect you to, to accept me at my largest. I don't, ex I don't expect you to accept me at all. That's the whole point I'm trying to make. I accepted myself. I, I love myself. Yeah, I'm not the size I want to be. I'm not... I'm not... perfect. I'm not... great. I'm not where I want to be. But I do love myself. I don't need I don't need the acceptance of others. A few weeks ago, there was kind of a big, big deal on the whole fat acceptance because one of these larger supermodel uh, supermodels, I guess, is what they're calling themselves. A larger woman. She's like a size. What they say, a size 18. I don't understand women's sizes. So if you do. Hey, great, great for you, because I don't. About how people need to find her beautiful and find her attractive. And that she is the, the new age supermodel. <clears throat> but then a couple days later it came out how much photoshopping has to go into all these photo shoot all these photo shoots that she does to make her look the way she does in these in these cover photos, these Sports Illustrateds, the uh, magazines. First of all, the issue is I shouldn't have to try to find you attractive at all. Never. Never should happen. Eye is in the, the, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You don't tell me what's attractive. I'll tell you what I find attractive. I might not find her attractive, I may find her attractive, and that's not, that, that's part of the, the argument I'm trying to make. <coughs> I don't necessarily find the Cindy Crawfords and the Tyra Banks attractive either. But that's on me. I shouldn't, I shouldn't think other people need to accept my way of thinking. And what I, what's in my mind. I really, again, how you think 
and how I think are going to be two totally different things. Now we can have a conversation about it and maybe you'll open my eyes to some things, I'll open your eyes to others. But no point should you tell me what I find attractive and I tell you what you should find attractive and then the world is married. That's not how it works. Again, I wanted to touch on it again. It's, it's probably going to come back to this at some point because this whole fat acceptance thing and it's the deeper I dig, the more I find and man, <clears throat> I understand points of it. I understand 100%. Other parts, I'm just like, eh, do, do we need to go this way? And, the, and why do we need to go this way? In a way, we are just boxing ourselves in because we got a low standard, a high standard. Now we're in a box. We're, we're capping ourselves. We're humans. Let's get better than that. Let's go, let's move past that. Again, Find me on uh, Facebook, Jedi Raymond Avendroth. Don't forget to reach on down here, hit that subscribe button. You can email me if you don't feel comfortable dropping a comment at bmfjed at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as JedFDK. Also have another YouTube channel, JedFDK. If you guys want to check it out, it's a daily blog. And I will catch you guys next week. Peace.